Match day six of the UEFA Champions League. The Kings of Europe are in the final venue, 171 days before the final in St. Petersburg with their tonight's take on Zenit. We're already qualified from Group H, but we do need a win tonight to secure that top spot in the company of the brilliant Abby McCarthy and Sam Obaseki. Be good? Yeah, be really good. good. Yeah? Excited. It's nice and warm in the studio, which it definitely isn't in Russia at the moment. <laughs> They're at minus 15, potentially down to minus 17. No. <laughs> yeah, that is bad, but it's still cold outside. Come on, <laughs> come on. it is kind of bad. There's levels to this game, yeah. though, Sam. Yeah. There's definitely levels to it. They've had to close the roof. We've had to put a jumper on. It's a, bit, <laughs> it's a little bit different, isn't it? Um, it? It's going to be a good game tonight, though, especially because Zenit were brilliant when they came here. You know, we, we obviously won the game 1-0, but they're a good side. We do need a result tonight. So it is one of those where you just think, just get it done, boys, maybe. Yeah, and it's their last game in the Champions League, so they're definitely going to want to come out and show, have a good showing for themselves as well. And like we said, the last game was a bit close, so they're probably thinking that they're going to have more of a chance. And they've seen that we've got a few injuries as well. So it's, it's going to be a good game. Potentially one of those, Abby, as well, where it's on paper probably a perfect opportunity to get a reaction from, from the weekend, a, a disappointing result for the team mm. on Saturday. But then you play a team where the result is kind of additional, but it, you're already qualified. You've done the hard work, really, and against a team that can't qualify either. So it's, it's quite important to get that reaction today. Yeah, absolutely. We want to come out and react and, and win. I feel like the last few Premier League games have maybe you know not been our best. Weren't our best against United. Got lucky against Watford, obviously lost against West Ham at, at the weekend. Why not? Come and get a win today, you know, and keep this Champions League run going. Let's have a little look at the table then. Uh, before the games this evening, of course, uh, Chelsea topped the group with 12 points from five games. Juventus, identical record, 12 points from five games. Obviously, we beat Juventus comfortably uh, here a couple of weeks ago, 4 0. It does give us a slight advantage goal difference wise. I think Juventus can still qualify top of the group if Chelsea win the game, but Juventus beat Malmo, I think it's 8 0 or something oh. like that, and Chelsea I mean, win 1 0. Never say so, never. Never say never. <laughs> Malmo did win the league at the weekend, so, you know, maybe they, 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 they can't. <laughs> Qualify. Maybe they've enjoyed themselves a little bit much, but I suppose it comes down to Sam. You get the business done your end, and then you don't worry about permutations. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think we've we've done that quite well this season. We've just taken every game as it as it comes. You know, we're not looking too far ahead. We're not looking too far back. It's just this game. We know we've got a few injuries, but at the same time, we're playing in it today, and we know that they're gonna they're gonna want it and they're gonna feel at home. So. I'm, I'm expecting like a, a reaction from the boys, especially with the result that we had on the weekend. Absolutely right. We, we keep talking about fixture pile-up. Well, there has been a, a matter of rotation in the Chelsea team this evening. Let's have a look at the side that Thomas Tuchel has selected in goal. Kepa Aretha Balaga starts. Captain wow. Cesar Azpilicueta comes into what we think is a back three with Andreas Christensen and Malang Sarr. We believe Sal Nigeth is going to start on the left-hand side. Ross Barkley, Mason Mount in the middle, Reese James on the right, and then front three of Callum hudson odoi Romelu Lukaku and Timo Werner. Obviously a full bench of Bettinelli, Mendes, Rudiger, Alonso, Thiago Silva, Pulisic, Loftus-Cheek, Ziyech and Havertz. Uh, Abby, obviously there's, um, there's quite a lot of changes in there. It mm. could be a completely different system of formation by the time we line up. That's how we think it's going to go. Yeah. But obviously, you know, we, we've all seen on social media, a lot of people think potentially Sal could be playing in the middle, Reese could be playing in the middle, but yeah. we think that's how we're going to go. Yeah, but I mean, Callum could also be playing on the wing. I feel like it's going to be one of those that until it, the game actually starts, we're not, we're not going to know, but... We're in such a good position. I know we've spoken so much on this show about the depth of our squad, but the fact mm. that also the players can play in so many different positions as well, you know, we're, we're very, very, very lucky. And it's great to see Kepa get a start, actually. I know Thomas Tuchel's actually spoken about quite openly. You know, Mendy's had a little bit of a knock in confidence recently, so I feel like, you know, he can sit this game out. And Kepa is always brilliant when he's called upon, so it's him kind of staking his claim, isn't it? Big game for Saul as well, uh, minutes for, for Barkley. So, yeah, a, a big game for all of those players today. Definitely, and that front three as well, Sam. You know, we've not seen Lukaku and Werner link up as much as we'd like because of the injuries to both of them in, mm. in recent weeks. Callum's in there as well. You know, he provides uh, again his directness, his energy, his industry. Romelu Lukaku starting the game today is big for Chelsea. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm expecting, I might be a bit confident, but I'm expecting a lot of goals just because I know Lukaku's the type of player that's definitely getting frustrated. The fact that he got injured, the fact that he's coming in and he's not played as well as he'd want to. We, we heard Tuchel talk about maybe bringing him in, in too soon and I'm probably thinking, Lukaku's thinking, no, I'm, I'm alright, I can start <laughs> the game. As well as Werner as well, they haven't really connected as well as we wanted them to and I think this game is the, the right game for them to, you know, start, start getting that chemistry that we know that they can build, especially with um, hudson Adoy, who has been creating a lot of chances um, in the front line. So I think if they get it flowing, then it could be goals galore. 
Absolutely. Uh, Callum's a great point as well because for, for me is been one of Chelsea's standout players so far this season. I think the biggest testament as well is at the start of the season there was talk of him playing right wing back, left mm. wing back, mm -hmm. you know, maybe in the front three. I think in Chelsea's best eleven, a lot of Chelsea fans will make the argument he starts in that front three and that, that's just kind of testament to how good he's been. Yeah, exactly. Like you say, it was kind of one point. He wasn't always necessarily always in the starting eleven, but he has really staked his claim, hasn't he? And, and for me, potentially one of the first names on the team sheet at the moment, just because he does create chance. He's such a direct player as well, isn't he? He's not afraid to take people on. I think he's been phenomenal this season. Season, and I'm sure we're going to feel his impact tonight. Potentially a, a different role as well for, for Mason Mount tonight, but a little bit deeper. And Mason's brilliant wherever he is. Yeah. And I suppose <laughs> that, that sometimes can be... Some players growing up, when they can play in all different positions, it kind of works against them because they're so versatile. They get put here, there and everywhere. Let's talk about maybe even Reese James playing centre field at some point today. That versatility that Abby's already mentioned, you know, that players can play in different positions, but they know the system. The system may not change, players and personnel may do. That's got to be such a positive, not only the squad depth, but the range of positions that players can play in. Yeah, and also the fact that Tuchel trusts you in that position, because we've seen him play in the front three, we've seen him play a bit further forward, but him dropping deeper, we, we all, all the fans know that we Mount can play there, but the fact that he's, he's actually getting opportunities to play there alongside Barkley, who's actually played well in the, in the games that we've seen him, but maybe it's just other players that are in more favour but I think they're going to be able to communicate well because they've been playing they've had a few games together Saul as well he's mm -hmm. he's had an up and down time at Chelsea You've, we haven't seen the best of him but I think Tuchel giving him the trust and saying you know what here's another game show show me what you can do along with other players that like Saar he's played well as well so I think if now that they've seen the trust that Tuchel's given them I think they're, they're all gonna eat up it's experience in this competition as well. Sal's played a, a, multiple games, a lot of football in the Champions League for Atletico in the past. Malang Sal went deep in the competition with Porto last year. So players that are coming in that are new to our system are not new to this competition. You know, you look at the bench as well. Hakim Ziyech, Christian Pulisic and Kai Havertz. The strength that, that Chelsea have to change games. And again, I think it screams volumes that the players that are coming in that are maybe happy to adapt and, and play in a different role and try something new because it is one of those where there's only 11 shirts and I suppose mm. whatever position you're playing, you want to play football. So mm -hmm. it is that case of if you've got the opportunity, whatever position is, you take it. Yeah, I think because it's so competitive at the moment, isn't it, to even be awarded a start, even to come off the bench just because we've got so many kind of amazing players at our fingertips. It does mean when people do come on, they are playing their absolute best, best because yeah. otherwise they're straight out the picture. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to see Thomas Tuchel rewarding players, you know, for brilliant performances. Obviously, like Ruben Loftus Cheek, obviously not playing today, but you know, he's been he was maybe someone I was like, oh, I'm not sure if he'll get many minutes this this season, in, especially in the Premier League. And you know, he's been he's been playing plenty. So it it shows if you go on, you put a good performance in, then you're in the team. Mm -hmm. You know, it's ever changing, isn't it? Absolutely right, absolutely right. Let's have a look at some of the social media reaction into the Chelsea lineup. See. <laughs> Masterclass <laughs> incoming. Yeah, I like that one. That's a nice one. Uh, we do want to see those two link up. That'd be class. And here's another one from Jefferson. That Lukaku, Werner, and Tro link up. Uh, that should be in a daily basis lineup. Can't wait to see the movements. That, yes. That's a really good point, isn't it? Because yeah. Lukaku's movement, I think, kind of gets lost a little bit. And even for the Ziyech goal the other day, and the way that he pulls defenders away, and you've got two very mobile, willing runners in Lukaku, uh, in Werner and, and Callum Hudson Odoi. That the movement may not get sort of the appreciation it deserves, but maybe it should do. Maybe that's something that we are missing. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of the time there's been a lot of questions about oh, is, are we not playing to Lukaku's strengths and, and why is he not scoring as many goals? But he's still playing a part in us scoring and us playing well. It's just the fact that it might just be him trying to adapt to the new system and you, we see how much the players are changing around him. I think Callum, we've seen them have a, a few moments where they have good link-up play and I think today... I know that they're quite close as well, so if he's not giving him the ball where he wants it, then he's, gonna, he's definitely going to get it for as well. He's going to let him know. He's yeah. gonna let him know. Uh, and some more social media reaction as well. <laughs> uh, I have no clue who he's playing where. At least it's, it's not just us. I was no. going to say, I'll, 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 it could I'm be 3 4 3, 3 5 2. If, 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 if you're a Chelsea game. fan at the moment, your, your mobile is going mad. Like, who's playing where? Yeah. where yeah. Where's Saul playing? Where's Barkley playing? Is Mason as a six? It's, it, it's interesting. Has this affected. Let's do play predicted now. Has this affected your predictions for play predicted? If you haven't had your say yet, you can do that mm -hmm. uh, by getting on to the fifth stand up now. You've got up until five minutes for kickoff to make your predictions for final score, first goal scorer, number of corners, total shots, possession, loads of really cool prizes to win, especially over the festive period. Done some special boosts and a big end of season prize as well. Um, you've gone 3 0, Sam, because we did ours on, on social media a little bit earlier. Yeah. Abby, what's your final score? 
I'm going three 0 as well. I'm feeling pretty confident, and I went Lukaku first goal scorer. I think That's it's I think it's time he's going to be so hungry for goals yeah. today. I'd love to see a few from him. What about total shots then, Sam? I'll go with you though, because Ch Chelsea dominate games, and if you've got Lukaku, he, he's one of those where if he gets in a position, half a yard, he's shooting. Yeah, I, I think it, it might be high. You know, I'm I'm saying. 14 15. Okay, 14 nice. 15. Nice. I think that I think Barkley as well, we've seen him striking from distance. Mount as well, he's got it in him. Saul, we've seen we've seen him score some screamers as well. So James as well. There's all all these guys <laughs> that can score screamers. So I think it, it's definitely gonna be up there. You just convinced me I've added a couple more on the market now, actually. <laughs> yeah, we can talk we through that. Uh, yeah, loads more to come, including the social. Time for the social, then a look through uh, the social media channels of, of a Chelsea fan you may have seen over the last couple of weeks. We've got loads to do, including the trending topics of the week. Uh, in case you missed it as well, a little bit of a lighter look and not only a quiz, but we'll do a Culture Club Russian special, Ooh. which is going to be very, very cool. Uh, let's start then with show and tell, right? And it's, it's around one specific man today. Chelsea legend, former Zenit St. Petersburg mm. captain, Branislav Ivanovic, what a player. Oh, so, show and tell, I'm going to... You can pick this goal then, Abby. You yes. can have this goal so, first. Uh, this is obviously a huge one because it's his, his first goal for the club. And, I mean, his movement in that and just the header. I mean, he's such a, he's such a big game player. He's got a lot of goals, a lot of important goals. But that one at Anfield silenced them. is it's pretty beautiful. He scored two in that game as well, yeah, didn't he? Exactly. Two in that's that just game. Fun. I think it was 5-7-5 five, five on aggregate Chelsea yeah. win. It's a big, it's a, he's a big game player. He's a big game player. You have the casting vote on this, by the way, uh, in the comments on the fifth stand-up. So the second goal, I'm going I'm to pick the second goal. I'll play the second goal All because right. this is probably one of my favourite Chelsea goals oh, ever. Oh, what a finish. Oh. What a finish. And we know how this season ended. Roberto Di Matteo in a dugout stamps over the ball, Ivanovic. It's reminiscent of the Trevor Shalaba one a few weeks ago against yeah. Juventus yeah. in a yeah, similar yeah. technique and... Hopefully that's not the only similarity that finishes this season when we look back <laughs> on it, because what a finish that is. This is a centre-half slash right-back that's doing this. Yeah, Roots on the penalty it. spot as well. What is he doing there? Exactly. <laughs> Roberto Di Matteo and assistant manager John Terry for the evening as well. <laughs> um, absolutely loving it. What a finish. What a player. Just a warrior, an absolute warrior. Yeah, Sam, you've is. got the final goal. He's got some, scored some goals in the past. Yeah, what and I think, for? I think this goal has to just be the winner before oh. I even come. Look at the movement and then look at where the ball goes. Like, you have to appreciate, this isn't a striker, this is a right back, yeah? <laughs> where the movement. Last minute of the Europa League. Last final. minute. I remember the emotion specifically where what we were thinking, oh, it's going to go extra time and all of this stuff. And then look at the way he's looking at the ball, he knows exactly what he's going to do. Claimed. The only person that was really determined to win that ball, come on, I have to, I have to have that one. <laughs> <laughs> that is a brilliant They're goal. They're all so that, good, though, that that's the thing. The fact he celebrated on the crossbar at full time as well, oh, yeah. Yeah. there's that famous <laughs> picture of him and yeah. Dario Luiz. Yeah, yeah, sensational. You can have your sound, which you think is your favourite, uh, in the comments on the fifth stand-up right here. Uh, time for trending topics of the week, then. And obviously, the, the trend has been fairly... Fairly common because it's coming up. Hashtag injury bug is what we're going to be talking about mm. today because it does feel like we are getting to that stage of the season now where injuries are becoming a little bit more frequent. Uh, it's only it's only to be expected because this is the busiest part of the season, Abby, and mm -hmm. we've got a lot of football every three or four days we seem to have at the moment. So injuries and, and, and little sort of tears and pulls and tight muscles are going to feel like that. Uh, th this first tweet kind of sums it up really well, I think, and it, it, it kind of summarises uh, all us Chelsea fans that we've been feeling the last couple of days. Thomas Tuchel said in August, the Chelsea squad wasn't the biggest and many of us scoff. Now, with injuries mounting, it's so hard to disagree with him. And it really is, Abby, because we've been the first to sit here and go, we're so squad lucky. Death. Squad death. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it only takes a couple in one specific position and you go, oh, actually, maybe it isn't. Yeah, I mean, how much have we flexed that on this show? The squad death. <laughs> oh, we're Chelsea. We've got loads of players. But as you say, as it gets to this really congested period, it's. I'm a little bit nervous, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, I just re like we can't really afford to be picking up, um, you know, too many more injuries and stuff. But hopefully, hopefully we'll we'll be fine. It's more just bringing in different players sometimes makes things a little bit disjointed. There's not as much chemistry and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping it's not going to affect our performances too much in this part of the season. It's, it's mounting a little bit, Sam, isn't it? And it is to be expected. Every team will feel this over the next couple of weeks because of the sheer. You know, the sheer demand on, on players, you know, and, and they don't get to train a huge amount. There's a lot of travelling to be accommodated in as well. And then every three or four days, you're expected to be at your absolute peak. Mm -hmm. And us as fans are very selfish and we're going, why are they not 150% <laughs> all the yeah. time? Yeah. They're, they're human beings, you know, their bodies can only take so much. They are to be expected, but we are quite lucky that we can accommodate it to a level 
but even the biggest and the deepest teams can, can get hit with injuries and, and feel it. Yeah, and that's the thing. We're, we're blessed in a sense where we've got players in certain positions that can definitely play in multiple positions, like we've said. But at the same time, like Abby said, when it's like the centre midfield, for example, we've got Kante out, Jorginho, then Kovacic, he came back from injury, and then COVID as well, which is another thing that you have to worry about. It's like, OK, cool, we're down to maybe three, yeah. three four. So it's like, that's a problem in itself. But at the same time, I think it's no need to worry because Tuchel has shown that he trusts in the players. If it was one of those things where you, you saw players that were just being, um, they weren't a part of the setup and they, they have to come in, it's like, ah, oh, the, the fans won't be as comfortable with seeing certain players. But now we're seeing Barkley, we're seeing Saul, we're seeing Mount drop deeper, we're still comfortable with that team. Absolutely. That's it, isn't it? It's about be believing in that Chelsea squad. And the depth is, is staggering. I mean, look look at this. This is the injury list that we've got. And, and in fairness, I think... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Chris Jericho music. Excellent. So good. Kante, Kovacic, uh, Jorginho, Reese James. Obviously, Reese is, is thankfully back in the side after yeah. after overcoming an injury. Ben Chilwell and, and Trevor Shalaber as well. This is, a, this is an excellent point as well. Chelsea's injury list is better than most people's starting eleven. <laughs> Werner, Chilwell, Kante, Kovacic, James, Jorginho, Chalabar. Obviously, oh. Werner and James, we've, we've managed to turn around fairly quickly. Yeah. Mm. But it, realistically, it's true. You know, we've, we've got a, a, a team there. You could piece this together a team mm. Mm. that at the start of the season you could put in for, for the first Premier League game and you want to bat an eyelid. Oh, you know, yeah. We've, yeah. we've had, already had a large spell about Lukaku as well. And, mm -hmm. yeah. It's difficult at this point of the season, but I suppose that's why the best teams get through it. Yeah, but we're world class. All those players will walk into any Premier League team. They'd be so happy to have them. Any team in Europe, in fact, any team in the world, potentially, you know. Mm. So we're, we're lucky that we've got all these, all these world class players. So even if there are injuries, I think we're still going to be fine. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Oh, absolutely right. Absolutely, we've got to deal with it. We've got to handle it. A lot more social reaction, kind of, uh, on that point as well. This, this is a nice one. The injuries have hit us hard the past month or so, and our form has taken a massive dip. I think massive dip's a bit of an over exaggeration, but I kind of take the point. Don't let that distract from how good we actually are, because we are. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. You know, as Chelsea fans, we set a level, we set a kind of demand, but we've, we've been that good that when you don't win three games on the spin, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a nice one. Chelsea's <laughs> players going back from injury one by one. <laughs> the players coming back are important, though, aren't they? Because a week and a half ago, ahead of the, the Leicester game coming back off of international duty, you kind of go in, OK, will Lukaku start? Mm. He doesn't start, we win the game. Uh, Juventus doesn't start, we win the game. The, the Man United game, he gets 10 minutes at the end. Again, last week against Watford, he comes on, makes an impact and he's getting there. But we're not having to rush players, but we keep coming back to this. But slowly and surely, players are starting to come. But we've got a couple of long-term injuries, Ben Chilwell being the main yeah. one. But yeah. Kovacic is another one. Thomas Tuchel says in his presser how close he was and mm. then he gets COVID. They are coming back. We are getting to that point. Yeah, and I think that that's the thing. Tuchel's not panicking, so we as fans shouldn't panic because he knows the squad squad depth, even though there's there's a few injuries, he's he's confident in the bunch that he has right now. And also, it's not like we're you've seen a drop in, in a standard. Yeah, we've conceded a few more goals than we used to, but at the same time, it's not like we're seeing multiple mistakes on the pitch from different areas where we're saying, ah, oh, if this player was playing there, this wouldn't have happened. That's not really the case, so I don't think it's time to panic just yet. No, completely agree. Speaking of Thomas Tuchel, here he is in his pre-match press conference yesterday with Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I noticed that Matteo Kovacic still wasn't back training today. I just wondered why he's still missing and do you have any time scale on when he might be back yet? You know, we have uh, bad news because Matteo was in training yesterday with, the, with a big smile and it was, was a pure pleasure uh, to have him back and uh, he got tested, tested positive today for Corona, so he's isolating and uh, quarantining and out for another several days, which is a huge setback for him personally and, and for all of us. Ben Chilwell is out for tomorrow, N'Golo is out, Trevor Chaloba is out. Uh, Shoshinio is out and Mateo Kovacic is out. There's a huge chance that we rest some players and maybe more important, we give some players load who need the load and who need minutes and who need rhythm to, to put it in the other way. And yeah, the, the decisions will be made tomorrow, but there's a huge chance for that. He's one of the guys who need rhythm, who needs minutes. He's not the only guy. He's always in our thinking, he's always in our thoughts. We always reflect on, on every single training session and performance and, and form. So he, he is uh, one of the guys we, we think about, of course. We try to uh, encourage him because he uh, grows into, into Chelsea more and more. 
and we will not stop to encourage him and, and uh, try to bring out the best and, and help him to help us and help the team. And there's a high possibility that uh, he can prove it tomorrow and we will help him with it. We've always thought about Angolo in, in this country as almost like Superman. I think um, I think Pogba once said he's only got three lungs, something like that. Do we now have to accept though that he is human? You know, he's getting older. We don't have the feeling that it's about about age that he takes longer. He's in general a careful person. He takes care about his body. He does not want to take risks. And I agree, he is a superman. Um, he is the guy who makes the difference. Can we produce results and top performances without N'Golo? Yeah, we can, we proved already, but uh, it's easier with him. You have a certain anger in you that you don't have when you win. Like you have a certain anger and ambition to turn things around and, and, and makes you like instantly, yeah, makes you first feel very bad, but then uh, brings out like also the, the the, the need in, in you personally to step up and, and, and to show a reaction. But we need to step up in details and we need to do this on the highest level and we need to do it relentlessly and, uh, and no matter what, no matter what the result is, and no matter what the occasion is and no matter how big the adversity is. And we have, we have some, some space where we can improve in the details, but it's not about the big picture in the moment. There's a lot of good players at Chelsea, as you know, especially in the, in the midfield department. So, um, yeah, a few injuries and, and, you know, I might be put in and I have to be ready. And I feel like I have been ready. I feel good physically. Um, and it's, it's time for us to, you know, step up as a team and as an in individual when players are injured and we have to have to do a job. But I feel like I'm, you know, I'm ready to do that. How do you go from being on the crest of a wave as you were a couple of weeks ago when you were smashing Juventus 4-0 to suddenly losing concentration at, at key moments, please. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's, that's football. Um, football changes very quickly sometimes. Um, but I can say that it's not like we've been playing terribly at all. Um, we've just had a few mistakes that that have, that have cost us uh, and we need to take ownership of that um, but apart from that we've been playing some really good football um, the results just haven't haven't showed that at all if we keep the the basics you know at a high level uh, and the and the mistakes um, you know low then we'll be, that'll give us a good platform to, to to win games yeah I'm, I'm really enjoying it um, mainly because I'm just on the pitch and, and playing playing a lot of football, which obviously I haven't done uh, in the past few years. So I'm enjoying it a lot and it comes with different duties and um, different things required of you in that in that role, which I'm, which I'm very, not enjoying a lot. Yeah, I'm ready to, to play. I'm ready to play wherever the, the boss needs me to. Brilliant, Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Thomas Tuchel speaking at the pre-match press conference yesterday. Right, time for Culture Club, OK? What you it's got part them? of the social. So, obviously, we've had Malmo from Sweden, so we had some Swedish treats. It was nice. They uh, were good, actually. Yeah, well, yeah. it was quite nice. What and then obviously, uh, We had, like, a, an almond... No, it was like a an pistachio. A, an almond. Oh, my God. <laughs> and a pistachio. <laughs> <laughs> and a pistachio kind of thing, which yeah, was, was nice. nice yeah. And then we had espressos, biscotti and pandoro. Uh, last week, Or panatoni. Mm -hmm. Panatoni last week. So, so this week, the, the Russian treats that we've got. So, we'll start with this, OK, which is a... A sweet pastry with vanilla flavour. Mm. Okay, that's awesome. quite nice to be fair. It's got quite like a like a roll consistency to it. Um, so I'll, I'll let you take your own. Obviously, COVID safe and everything like that. So here we go. Take take your own out of there. Delving Good work, in. Sam. Oh yeah. There you go. I'm just gonna tuck in. Glad, yeah. Go. Dig in. Dig in. See what they're about. This is the really awkward part Ooh. as well because when you do a football quite show, dense. you don't practice eating, <laughs> do you? Mm. Don't practice eating on t on camera. No, I like it. That's nice though. That is nice, you know. Mm. I didn't expect it to be mm. like this. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Might need to cleanse the palate, so mm. let's do that with a drink. So, this is birch, birch water from a birch tree. Seriously, this is how they do it. Look at that. <laughs> That's the exact no man, right? That's they got that, this. Um, <laughs> it's just him, busy at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I feel about any drink that that comes about with a drill involved. Mm, yeah. Drilling into a tree. It's got to be healthy, though, isn't it? It's got to be healthy. It's from a Surely. tree. Surely. 
So have a little sip of this. It smells. Cheers, cheers. It smells quite sweet, doesn't it? Mm. It's, it's very, like you said, it's very, very natural. Nice it's a right. bit like um, elderflower. Kind yeah, of. it does. Yeah. It does. I'm going to pretend I know what elderflower tastes like. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it does. That's quite nice. That. That's quite nice. That. That is actually nice. I'd have a go at that. And these are Ooh. chocolates. Okay, so these are little Russian chocolates. Um, you see if you can see that there. Um, I'll give you one of these. This one here. Look at that one. I reckon this is hazelnut because there's squirrels involved. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be in it. There you go, Sam. You can have that on, mate. Thank you. Shotgun. Um, Abby, I think it's going to be fairly similar this one because it's the same shape. That's all I've got to oh, go on, really. Cool. And my Russian is not got a squirrel excellent on it, at the moment. It hasn't got okay. a squirrel on it. This one here has, though. Oh, yeah. So I think this is quite similar. This one here is Let's completely different. So I'll tell you what, I'll go completely different. Have a little look at that. I'm not, not quite sure about that. that looks like swans it's got involved, Ooh, though. Like a little chalky bar. But so this has clearly got some sort of royal connection if swans are involved. What are this saying? is great. Yeah. It's nice, you know. Oh, this looks. This looks, like, um, this looks like a non ice cream choc ice. <laughs> Remember those from back in the day for about 10p? Those were banging. Mm. They were good. I think it's like a, a nugget y kind of thing. Can you see that? Nougat kind of oh, thing. I'm into this. It's quite nice, yeah. It's quite yeah, nice. This is quality. Mm. It's nice chocolate around the outside. Rich. Oh, what's that saying? Anyone, be, anyone been to Russia before? No. No, actually. No. Fancy going? End of, end of May? <laughs> oh. oh, I'll see you there. I'm there. 171 <laughs> days. We've had a look at the Airbnbs. We'll, find, we'll, we'll all chip in. Be fine, <laughs> no uh, let, let's move on then, because that, that was quite nice. I've enjoyed that. So, mm. I've, you know, I've, I've given you replenishment. So now I'm going to test your brains. Let's do the oh. quiz, shall we? Oh, I knew there'd be a, there'd be a downside. Got to be. You've got to treat them first. <laughs> And then get it back on, right. back on track. So, match day six tonight, final group game, obviously. So, we're going to look back at some previous Champions League match day six encounters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's going to be multiple choice. So, we'll start with you, Abby. Our first Champions League campaign was in the 1999 2000 season. In match day six, we beat Hertha Berlin 2 0. Who scored his only goal for us in that game? Didier Deschamps, Manuel Petit, or John Harley? I know this. Deschamps? Correct. I was. Absolutely right. Oh. It just came to me. Good good work. Oh. Albert Ferrer also scored in that game oh. as well. What a legend. His only goal for us as well. Oh. Right, um, OK, Sam. We beat Valencia in a must-win game on match day six of the 2011-2012 season. What was the final score? 3-1, 2-0 or 3-0? Ooh, 3-1. 3-0. Oh, oh, I just, oh, so it was such confidence, I yeah, believed I did. you. Yeah, I me did. too, me too. I'll, I'll, I'll double-check it. <laughs> Abby, which Russian team did we draw one all with on match day six last season? Zenit, Krasnodar, Spartak Moscow. Last one. Mm -hmm. Last one? Yeah. No. Uh, oh, what? <laughs> Why did you do it's that? It's only last season as well. I've just got a terrible memory. Kras Krasnodar. <laughs> Okay. Was it? Yeah, it was. One, one all. Uh, no, no, sorry. One nil. Sam, yeah, one this, nil. Is your, this is for one all. In Jose Mourinho's first season, 2004-2005, we visited which of his former teams on match day six? Was it Porto, Benfica or Inter Milan? Ooh. Ooh. Porto. Correct. Yes. Good work. Good work. One all. Almost went Into the final. We've got one question each. OK, Abby. How many goals have we scored on match day six in total? Oh, 20, 25, or 30? <laughs> Your research ain't going to help you I'm out sorry, here, what? I guess. What sort of question is that? <laughs> I'm going to go in the middle then and go 25. If you'd have said 30, you'd have been right. Oh, You're wrong. No. <laughs> Sam, I hate but, it when people do that. Yeah, you hate that when you're watching quiz shows. So, yeah. They really rub it in, salt in the wound. You've been watching bad quiz shows. I am. <laughs> I'm going to get a speedboat out that you could have won in a second. Right, Sam, last question for the win. In the 2012-2013 season, we were eliminated in the group stage, but who do we play in our final game? Juventus, Shakhtar or Nordjylland? Juventus. Incorrect. No way we lost them. Incorrect. Who did we lose to? Nordjylland. Oh, no way. way. We're, we're, we're going to have a tiebreaker in a moment, OK? So we're going we're gonna to put we're gonna put that to the side for a moment. We're going to let this stir. Well. Usually we go to an ad break. We're not about that <laughs> way, OK? I've seen Bradley Wolf do it on the chase. It, it, it steadied it for a little while. Um, match day six is always that in, in... It's kind of... It's the one that you build up towards, Sam, isn't it? It's the one you look forward to because you go, hopefully, by this point, you're through. You've got nothing to worry about. Saw Liverpool do it last night, Manchester City, Man United already through as well. Mm. Being through is the, is the hard part. The easy part now is to focus on just getting three points again mm. because it's so easy now 
to go, we're through, don't worry about it. You don't want to finish second in your group because the amount of teams that you could stumble up against. Yeah, you want a comfortable win. You want like an emphatic performance, especially with the results that we spoke about recently as well. And I think we've shown that we've been dominant in this in this um, group with the, the games against Juve, even the last minute win against Zenit before. So I think a win, like an emphatic win, will, will do us well for this, this group. Mm. There's a little bit as well, Abby. There's a little bit about... Last year, and I know we keep coming back to last year, and I know I'm getting it carried away again. But last year, we we played <laughs> <laughs> we played Porto. We didn't play in Porto. We played Porto. Mm. You know, there was that kind of sense of we knew where we were going. We knew it was going to end. Yes. There is a little bit of that today. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that at the end of the season, when you go, oh, do you remember first game we played mm -hmm. Zenit? The yeah. final was at Zenit Stadium. Mm -hmm. We got a good result, final match day six, to make sure we finish top of our group, get a favourable run into it. So is that narrative? Is that alignment? That you want to mm. make sure that luck is on your side and things mm. favour you. And the story, the story is great from a Chelsea fan's perspective, but I know all the TV companies will be going, if they win tonight, well, and we've got a good little bit of footage. If they do get to the final, that's a lovely little tie-in. Mm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you you want to win your group, don't you? Just just for bragging rights, to yeah. send out a message to everyone else still going forwards in this competition. You know, we're the current champions of Europe. We don't like to bring it up too much <laughs> on this show. <laughs> Probably every, what, two minutes? Uh, got so, a picture you know, yeah. it well. and it's... And it's um, it's ours to give away, but hopefully ours to keep. Absolutely. Mm. Right, let's get on to, in case you missed it then, uh, some really cool parts this week, uh, including this. Sam Kerr scored a worldie oh. in the oh, final of the FA Cup at the weekend. Very familiar to another Chelsea legendary goal. Yeah. Lovely. Look at that. Side by side, Ramirez and <laughs> Sam Kerr. Good celebrations from both of us. Well. Look at this. Literally stride for stride. Oh, it's Man, a lovely that mirror image. image almost. That's mirror crazy. Mirror image. And also, Abby, there was a, a, an interview with Sam Kerr on the fifth stand after the game saying that basically they're, they're tracked to the goalkeeper's movement. The keeper comes off their line yeah. quite a lot. So they've been practicing that in, in the week, in, in training in the run-up. Yeah, the amount of research and, and detail that Emma Hayes and her, her team put in. Because Sam Kerr tried a shot like that earlier on in the game, yeah. didn't she? Yes. And it knocked off the post. So she must have been so satisfied when she eventually got that in. And the fact that that was the third, third goal, 3-0, to really finish off and, and that game and win the FA Cup. Not bad at all. Mm. Absolutely not, absolutely not. Uh, our uh, uh, opponents this evening did something very, very cool at the weekend. Look at this. They came onto the field carrying oh, dogs from local that. shelters in need of homes. Don't, I would have been in tears. Anything with dogs, <laughs> I'm in bits. Isn't this the loveliest thing in the world? Yeah, I love seeing the pictures. Absolutely you? right. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely love that one. And in Paraguay, there's been something very strange going on. There's been a madness in Paraguay. Guarani led the uh, direct title rivals, uh, Cerro Porteño, 2 0 in the final game of the season. All was going well until there. Two players sent off in injury time. Blimey. Cerro then scored the 90 plus 9 and 90 <laughs> plus 11 <laughs> minute to what? take the championship. They shouldn't get Bellingham to do the interview after because <laughs> he'll just be calling out of the ref. That, that is was, chaos, that's isn't it? Madness. How is the extra time that long? Like, that 11 is. 11 minutes. That must have all been going on. I need to see the video about that because yeah. that, mm. that must have been mad. Right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you this tiebreaker question now, okay? So, nearest to the <gasps> pin, right? So, this okay. is for the win. I've built it up right. a little bit. This is for the win. Yeah, I'm really okay? nervous now. So, yeah. <laughs> match, day one. match day one, we played Zenit, of course, tonight's opponents. What minute did Romelu Lukaku score the winner? Sam, you can go first. Um, ooh, ooh, 84th minute. 84th minute. Abby? It's definitely towards the end, isn't it? Um, Ooh, should I I'm going to say... I'm going to say 80th minute. OK. Oh, no. I should have gone later, shouldn't I? Abby, you've won it 69th minute. Oh, oh was it? Great. I thought it was much later. Uh, but again, I think, I think that's, a, uh, that's a reflection of how well Zenit played on the night because it did feel like they kept yeah. us at bay for a very long yeah. time. It was really hard to break them down that night, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow. That's not really? good enough, Sam. Yeah, Wait, hang on. Enough. Well... Well played. Yeah. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm not competitive until I win. It, you that's deserve it. Not... You deserve it. Fair a, enough. Another one tonight will be absolutely fine, won't it? Another one tonight. Oh. You, feel, you feel feel comfortable, feel confident with it? Yeah, I'm, I'm expect. I, I'm hoping we score quite early on so we can kind of feel comfortable as mm. well. And I don't like feeling pressure going into that <laughs> last 30 minutes. It's not comfortable, is it? And, and very quickly, I mean, my, my favourite thing tonight is the thing we're all looking forward to seeing is what on earth formation, who's playing where. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's anyone's guess. Let's do a quick sweepstake before the game kicks off. <laughs> Winner takes all. <laughs> we'll absolutely take that. We will absolutely take that. Uh, Chelsea away to Russia this evening against Zenit St. Petersburg. Yeah, it is. It's the final uh, location as well. 171 days before we get to the final. But tonight is all about making sure we get three points, qualify top of the group for the knockout stage of the UEFA Champions League. The Kings of Europe are in action and we are handing over to our commentary team next with Matt Davies-Adams and Pat Nevin. <laughs> 